right. um, if there's any questions, please let me know. But otherwise, I'll um, go into some of the other updates that have occurred in the last year through our a AFRL funded um, effort at ESERA. So for the API, um, this is a interface for programming and calling OpenBSP functions externally. All the capabilities in OpenBSP should have full API support, but we sometimes overlook things, um, miss functions when we're introducing new features, things like that. Um, so if there's anything like that, make sure you please report it to developers so they can add that in. This also covers continuous integration and deployment, um, which have gone through some changes over the last year as well. So in, in 3.22, a couple of fixes with things not being updated correctly. Um, the API um, had a new function to get the VSPRO path and set the VSPRO path. MATLAB API support was also added. So um, I had a presentation on this last year, how to compile the MATLAB API, um, which you have to do um, as a user. It's not something that's shipped with OpenVSP, but we do now provide a template to help facilitate the MATLAB API. Um, compiling. So there's a, a CMake flag, this VSP enable MATLAB API, so that can tell CMake to um, compile the API or not, as long as it can find MATLAB and the SWIG executable. Also in 3.22, there were added analyses, tests, and examples for some of the stuff in the CFD mesh project. This release also started to translate the Travis EI and AppVayer continuous integration scripts to GitHub Actions so we could have a single place for compiling OpenVSP for all these different platforms and generating the binaries to be posted to the public. In 3.24, a um, couple of other fixes and small functions added, so those are, are listed here. Um, but one of the, the main ones on here to, to note is this API function unit test framework. So what that did was when we generate the API documentation, which you can see an example on the bottom right there, which is in Doxygen, what this function does is as we're generating that documentation, it goes through and it extracts all these examples that we have for each function as seen in green there put that put those into individual functions and output it as a single vsp script so this vsp script is going to contain a series of unit tests for each example code that we have documented here um, and that could be run uh, and and used to see if these functions are all working correctly in their documentation is a standalone example that can be run just by copying it into a main function of a VSP script, for example. We also updated AngelScript um, in 3.24. Added a control surface grouping functions and a few other um, small things there. In 3.25, there was just some improvements to the API test suite for VSP area. So I won't go too much into detail with some of the VSP era updates um, since I know Dave talked about that yesterday. So uh, in general, though, this uh, has to do with how we support open VSP or excuse me, VSP era on the open VSP side of things. So working with Dave Kinney to test new versions of VSP era, um, in particular through this master VSP VMV script that we have. And then we provide the GUI and API updates uh, for each new version. In 3.23, I added a, option, or a feature to automatically just grab the disk diameter from uh, props in disk mode. Cleaned up some of the command line arguments, so instead we prefer to use the VSPRO input file. And then this is when Rob initially introduced the VSP geom file format, which he talked about uh, a little bit in the previous presentation. This allows you to specify a thin surface and thick surface set. So you can do mixed VLM and panel analysis in VSP Arrow. Um, and so this is when it was first introduced. Now it's actually integrated 
um, as the experimental file format flag in the GUI. So that was done in 3.25. Um, but some other things that were done in the last two releases, so uh, some bug fixes, changed the way that we deal with the geometry input information for VSPRO in memory. So now you don't have to keep calling the compute geometry function in API scripts as long as your geometry isn't changing. So that's something that can be used to optimize the speed of your script. If you're calling VSPRO a lot and your geometry isn't changing, maybe you're just um, changing a VSPRO parameter. A couple of other things on there. So in 3.25, VSPRO was updated to 6.2, added in support for REC ref sweeps. The polar results, results are now read in. Um, and so those are available for export to CSV, or you can grab them from the API. Um, and then fixed a, some CP slicer results issues. In terms of meshing capabilities, um, so this is used to translate the analytical open VSP surfaces into a discretized representation. Rob talked about this in his last presentation a bit as well, so I won't go into too many details, but um, this is used by mass properties, CFD mesh, VSPRO, and in terms of what's been introduced in the last year, um, fixed a couple of bugs like a CFD mesh surface tagging issue um, and something in the, the wave drag meshing algorithm that wasn't working correctly. And added options to FEA mesh so you can rotate the ribs automatically with the dihedral of the wing. Spars can be parameterized based on the root and tip of the uh, percentage of that that section that it's in and fix some bookkeeping for mass properties and or excuse me point masses and mass properties in 3.23 the triangle library that we were using was replaced by a dmake version that had improved air handling so hopefully that should reduce the um, number of times that comp geom and cfd mesh crashes uh, with this more robust library that we have in there now. A couple of other things in here for updates on meshing capabilities, um, mostly just uh, bug fixes and, and small tweaks here and there. But you can see in the bottom right, the negative volume support was added to CompGeom, so um, had to make sure that was working correctly in the, the reporting of all those uh, wetted areas and volumes. And then the last thing to talk about is just a handful of miscellaneous developments in the, the last year. So uh, the first example on there you can see is resizable columns for tables in the GUI. So that allows you to click and drag, uh, make them as, as wide or narrow as the user would like. Uh, fixed a code Eli bug for super ellipse. So trying to always go through and address some of the, the issues on, on GitHub and get those uh, taken care of in a uh, reasonable amount of time. In 3.23, a lot of the faster update bugs is, were fixed, uh, which were initially introduced in 3.22. In 3.24, added a vertical screw and individual radii specification for rounded rectangles. More fixes for faster update, um, and then updated a lot of our libraries. So. Um, that brought a lot of our versions up uh, of the libraries that we used. Um, so GLM, uh, STB, libxml2, GLEW, cminpack, and FLTK. And uh, the last couple of things on here. So recently fixed a calculation for the total wing parameters. A few more faster update fixes in 3.25 um, and a design mode uh, selection for body of revolution geometries. Um, another thing to note is that the CMake version was updated, uh, so the minimum required now is 3.1. I think it was 2.8 before. A um, couple of upcoming things on there, so working to 
improve the FEA spar type in FEA mesh to help improve how it behaves when connecting up between wing sections. Uh, finally, fix the Python version identification in GitHub Actions. So it took us a couple of tries to get that, but uh, now it should be all, all ready to go for the, the next release. And uh, otherwise, the ESR is just going to be continue working with AFRL um, to support OpenVSP, and there's a, some new features and improvements that are, are being discussed shortly. Any questions? Thanks, Justin. Uh, appreciate going into all that detail. And um, you know, on we haven't had any uh, new questions that that you haven't really answered already uh, in detail. But on the subject of the higher resolution FLTK uh, features that were added, um, can you briefly show the capability on a display where you can zoom the windows in and out and increase the magnification? I think it's uh, either yeah, yeah. Control and Plus or Control Mouse Wheel. Yeah, I haven't done it. I, I remember you mentioning that. I haven't tried it myself in a little bit. So um, you said it's control. Rob, plus. do you remember what it is? It's there you go. Yeah. OK, now you can see our, our GUIs are still um, you know, looking good and everything. No issues there. Out if I need to. Pretty neat feature. I was uh, surprised that, um, that that was even in there. I didn't even know when we first updated the library. Yeah, I remember it, it popped in and it was kind of a, a handy little byproduct of going to the new library, but particularly for um, some people that might have, you know, several thousand pixel wide monitors where the, the GUIs can get shrunk down pretty darn small. Um, it lets you zoom in and, and see things that uh, might be a little more difficult. So, um, it was kind of a nice thing to discover, but yeah, uh, I'm glad we were great. able to to demo that. Hey, Justin. Yes. Um, we've had a question about body of revolution upper and lowers. So if you could close your trim surfaces GUI and uh, add a body of revolution. Um, so what's going on? I'll just try and talk through it and you can kind of demo. But um, What's going on on here is when you do a body of revolution, if you choose flow through, what it's going to do is it's going to take an X sec, which is a the curve, and in this case, it's a circle, and it's going to take the complete circle and revolve it around the center axis so that we have that circle's diameter specified there, um, and it'll revolve it all the way around. If you go back, to the flow through, you can choose instead to use the upper half of a curve or the lower half. So when we choose the upper half of a circle and we revolve it, it no longer has a hole in the middle and obviously now it's a sphere. And that may seem silly, but if we go to our XSEC type and we instead change it to say a four digit airfoil, um, here we're 10% thick or 100% thick. Let's change that T over C down to something more like an airfoil. What we've done here is we're actually taking a NACA, in this case, 0049 airfoil, and we're revolving the upper surface. Since it's a 0049, the upper and lower surfaces are the same. So if we also add some camber, come over to that airfoil and add a whole bunch of camber for us, um, what you can imagine is we're taking the upper surface of a cambered airfoil and revolving it. and you know, just in case you ever wanted to, you could instead go back to the design tab and instead of choosing the upper surface, you could choose the lower surface. And so what we've done here is we're actually taking the lower curve of that cambered airfoil and revolving it instead. And so that's really what those options are about is it only the upper and lower only matters if you're using a um, an XSEC type that is not symmetrical top to bottom. And if for whatever reason you wanted to choose which of those two curves you wanted to revolve. Um, so hopefully that explains what's going on with those three options of either doing a flow through or doing a uh, upper or lower curve revolution. 